So hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be discussing the topic of nootropic agents, what exactly are nootropic agents, and how can nootropic agents basically make us more intelligent, more mentally capable of performing tasks, and also helping us achieve our goals, whether it is studying or whether it is achieving your next promotion or that job you want to achieve to make your life better. Just like the movie Limitless, humans have always strived to find that particular substance which can enhance human cognition and make us outperform our competitors. In the movie Limitless, the actor basically takes a substance which makes him more productive, it makes him a very capable writer, and this makes him outperform his competitors, giving him great success and also making him extremely famous. Humans have always tried to find that particular substance or chemical which can help us basically achieve better mental clarity, mental focus and also make us more productive. And the concept of nootropic agents basically started to flourish in the 1970s. In 1972, Dr. Gurea basically managed to isolate a particular compound or substance. This compound was classified in a new class of agents known as nootropic agents. The compound in question was Peracetam. Peracetam was found to have in clinical studies a various effect on memory and learning, for example in lab rats, and it improved various aspects of learning, plasticity, and also various neuromodulatory effects. Piracetam eventually became the smart drug of choice with all the other racetams, and Piracetam is still used today, for example, in the treatment of various dementias, because Piracetam seems to have a variable effect on neuroplasticity in the brain, making the brain basically learn better and also staving off the memory loss associated with various dementias. In order to study learning and memory, one must first understand how actually the brain works and also understand the basic pathology of the human brain. The human brain is an extremely complex organ. It's made up of various areas. It's not one organ by itself and all of these areas interact with each other via a variety of new neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters include dopamine, noradrenaline, acetylcholine, serotonin and GABA. Basically all of these neurotransmitters exert various effects in the brain. Some are stimulatory, some are depressive, some are basically modulatory in nature. And the neurons interact with various brain areas which involve various functions, particularly within the various areas of the brain. When it comes to the human cognition, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Psychiatry, the DSM-5, classifies human cognition into six major domains. These include executive function, language learning, learning and memory, social cognition or social cognitive function, spatial function, perceptive function and also attention span or attention function. Therefore, the brain has six known domains which exerts different aspects of learning and memory. As we study the brain and we know about the pathologies, we can understand more about learning and memory formation in the brain and also this helps us understand better how nootropics can actually interact with the brain and also help us to achieve better, more effective brain functionality. With time after the 1970s, more interest basically started to appear in nootropic agents. There were various books written about the nootropic agents and the term smart drugs was coined basically in order to classify these agents as substances which can help the brain achieve more when it comes to creativity, intelligence and also learning and memory. Currently, the market cap for smart drugs and nootropic agents is always on the increase. The market is always growing in demand for substances like nootropic agents and of course this is an extremely profitable industry. If you go online there are various websites where you can actually buy a nootropic agent from. Such websites however might provide you with a substance which might not actually work. There are various substances also on the internet which can be bought and there might be issues with purity and quality of the substance. Therefore, whatever you buy online might not actually be effective or even work for you and might actually lose you some cash or some money, which eventually in the long run can hurt you both financially and also physically. So what on earth are nootropic agents? Nootropic agents by definition are substances which when taken can enhance human learning and cognition. They make us 
learn faster or affect an area of the human brain. They can also have protective activity in the brain, therefore prevent oxidative damage, aging, and oxidative changes within the brain itself. Therefore, an utopic agent is a substance which overall has beneficial effects on the human brain. When it comes to neutropic agents, neutropic agents can be classified into also various subcategories. There are substances which are stimulants in nature, including caffeine, methylphenidate, nicotine. There are the amino acids, such as L-theanine. We have fats such as the omega-3s, the DHAs, and the phosphatidyl serine. We have sports enhancement products like creatine, natural compounds, and plant-derived substances such as, for example, Panax ginseng, Bacopa moneri, Ginkgo biloba, anthocyanins, flavonoids, flavones. Therefore, neutropic agents can be widely classified into various subdomains. However, in order to obtain the benefit of a neutropic agent, of course, one must always combine a neutropic agent with an already present active lifestyle. A lifestyle which involves good nutrition, good sleep patterns, a degree of exercise and fitness, and also close friendships or relationships. So when it comes to neutropic agents, most of us don't really need to spend loads of money online buying that particular substance which is claimed to increase your cognitive abilities a hundredfold. You can actually get most of the benefits by going down to your local supermarket and just purchasing basically local produce, some fruits, vegetables, or basically other common household staples. One of the most commonly consumed nootropic agents is coffee. Caffeine is a substance which is found in coffee, in tea, in chocolate, in cacao beans, in guarana. And caffeine is known to be a very potent nootropic agent because it tends to stave off tiredness, fatigue, and it helps us to become more focused and increases our performance at completing a particular task, for example, either finishing that essay, working under stress, or else working when we are sleep deprived. Caffeine is easily obtainable. It's found in every supermarket, in every grocery store. You can find it all over the planet. Even when you're traveling, you can take caffeine. And basically, caffeine works as an eutropic agent because it blocks the adenosine receptors in the brain. Adenosine in the brain acts as a calming agent. It makes us sleepy and the blockade of adenosine helps us become more alert and more cognitively capable at performing a particular task. However, caffeine has its own amount of side effects. Consuming caffeine, of course, in some individuals can induce gastric irritation, gastric cramping, agitation, anxiety, and therefore caffeine sometimes has to be consumed at small doses especially in the morning, because if drunk in the evening or late afternoon, caffeine can be shown to, for example, alter the sleep patterns and make you not have a well-rested sleep, which is essentially important for overall mental health. The next nootropic agent upon the list is basically L-theanine. L-theanine is an amino acid. It's been shown to have effects on the alpha brainwaves of the brain and also stimulates the release of GABA, serotonin, and other neurotransmitters in the brain which exert a calming, relaxed type of focus. l in various studies was shown to be beneficial because it tends to increase the concentration and focus without the side effects of jitteriness, anxiety, and also the unwanted side effects of caffeine. l is great because it can be combined with caffeine and when consumed together, we can obtain the benefits of both caffeine and l together and this helps us achieve the best of both substances. The next substance to be discussed is basically nicotine. Nicotine is a stimulant agent, although it's not that popular because of its side effects, its addictive profile, and its negative effects such as anxiety, irritation, irritability, and also nicotine has been linked to the occurrence of mood disorders. Nicotine might have a potential benefit when it comes to working under pressure or when you're, for example, working in a sleep-deprived mode. Most of us, unfortunately, work long hours, work night shifts, and consuming nicotine in the form of a gum or in the form of a spray was shown to have beneficial effect on certain aspects of cognitive performance, such as typing speed, such as improved focus, and also improved productivity. However, nicotine's effects are short-lived because the half-life of nicotine is around one to two hours max. Another problem with nicotine is that nicotine can be addictive. Nicotine is also part of the addictive pathway of the brain, and therefore consuming nicotine can have various addictive effects on the brain and body, therefore limiting its potentiality as a nootropic agent. I have personally used nicotine in the form of gum, 
exam. Basically, I use nicotine during exam periods or when studying intensely for, for example, my medical finals. I also use nicotine, for example, when studying languages and also when I'm trying to code a long piece of code, which requires a long time of focus and gets me tired. And consuming nicotine gum helps me basically obtain better focus and better attention. However, when taking nicotine, as I said before, nicotine can induce anxiety, agitation and also irritability. Therefore, use it sparingly and don't overuse it because nicotine can actually make you more addicted to it and also make you more irritable and it can result in a basically addiction in the long run. Other substances which are quite popular also for daily consumption is fish oils, omega-3s. Omega-3s are essential to the human brain. The human brain is basically made up of fat and the consumption of omega-3s was shown to have various beneficial effects on human cognition, depression, mood disorders and it's also shown to stave off various mental health disease such as dementia, Alzheimer's and also various other pathologies of the brain. Fish oils contain a substance known as DHA and basically the DHA component makes up the insulation of our brains which makes our neural transmission faster and more efficient. The issue with omega-3s is that most omega-3s in order for them to exert a particular biological effect it takes a particularly long time for us to see the beneficial effects of consuming DHA. Supplementing with DHA is extremely important. DHA was also shown to have various benefits in the brain because it's anti-inflammatory. It can help us become more focused and also helps to save off various health and mental health disease. Therefore, I recommend taking DHA products as these can have various benefits in the long term. Of course, nothing in the short term seems to be extremely beneficial and therefore when you're supplementing for your mental health one has to look in the long term and long term goals. Another common substance which also can be used as a nootropic agent is basically creatine. Creatine is a performance enhancing substance, it's made up of amino acids and because our brain and our muscle is highly metabolic the brain consumes a lot of oxygen and also a lot of glucose in the human body. One molecule of glucose gives approximately 64 molecules of ATP and every time we are doing a mentally intense task we are burning extreme amounts of glucose. This results into a loss of ATP and in order to replenish the ATP supplementing with creatine seems to have a beneficial effect on cognitive performance. Various studies show that consuming creatine in the long run tends to stave off various mental health conditions such as mood disorders. Creatine was shown to be beneficial as an antidepressant. Creatine was also shown to exert improvements in memory, learning and also cognitive performance in the long term. Therefore creatine is not only a bodybuilding supplement but when consumed on a daily basis in a safe daily amount of around 3 to 5 grams a day, creatine seems to have potential beneficial effects on the human cognitive performance on the human brain and also on learning and memory. Of course no supplement should be taken longer than six months or no supplement should be taken longer than a certain period of time because we don't know the potential side effects of taking a substance over years or decades. However creatine most studies show that creatine is safe, creatine is low in side effects and when buying creatine always try to find the brand which is the purest in form and also has the least amount of impurities therefore buy brands which are tested in the European Union or approved by the FDA. Creatine can come for example in a powder form and consuming creatine I think personally I use creatine at the gym but I also use creatine to study for example my language learning and also when it comes to coding. I found that taking creatine basically helps me become more mentally focused and also it makes me more really capable of performing tasks under stress, under pressure and also when I am sleep deprived. Other nootropic agents are basically plant derived nootropic agents. Therefore various plants have been studied extensively and various plants have been shown to have various beneficial effects on the human brain. Whether it is improving blood flow to the brain, whether it is improving the microcirculation to the deep areas of the brain or whether they have a protective effect on the brain therefore reducing the oxidative stress and also the mental degeneration that happens with aging. Various plant substances include for example anthocyanins, pigments from berries, we have flavonoids, flavones from green tea. We also have various plants such as Panax ginseng, Bacopi monera and Ginkgo biloba. These substances were extensively studied and various studies and clinical trials and also meta-analyses 
show that when consumed on a daily basis, for example, the anthocyanins or the flavonoids in green tea, or for example, the panax ginseng, can help us achieve better mental performance because it modulates the brain in a protective manner. Panax ginseng is an adaptogen, and being an adaptogen, it helps us to perform under stress or under conditions of high mental performance. Therefore, Panax ginseng was shown in various studies to have various beneficial effects, and Panax ginseng also was shown to have vasodilatory effects in the brain, therefore helping the brain achieve better blood flow, better perfusion, and also it helps us basically become more adaptable over time, working under conditions of increased demand. Therefore, when it comes to nootropic agents, you don't really need to throw huge sums of money out there on supplements. You don't need to go on the internet and spend your money or your hard-earned cash on all these substances and vitamins and supplements which have claims of improving your mental function. Just going down to your local supermarket and investing in yourself by performing daily exercise, sleeping well, and also reducing your anxiety and having strong social bonds can help you achieve most of what you need to achieve for your overall mental performance. Therefore, if you have an overall healthy lifestyle, you can achieve more than most other people. I hope this video was interesting, guys. I hope I gave you some insight into the concept of nootropic agents. Thanks for watching my video and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.